What you're about to see is a republish due to a copyright strike for a song that happened to be playing on the radio while I was doing my video. I've learned my lesson. Don't have the radio on while you're doing your video. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Anthony, and I'm doing a seat swap from a 2012 leather seats to a 2000 F-250. The wiring harness is quite a bit different as the 2000 has three wires. It has a power, a ground, and a seatbelt buzzer. This one here has lots of other gadgets and so forth and so on in it. Uh, this is my passenger seat here. I've got my driver's seat over here. This one actually has two plug-ins, neither of which I'll use. It also has a memory module here that I'll be taking off and getting rid of. And what happens is all this is plugged into the memory module. Um, I can, I'm going to have to rewire these from the motors themselves to this switch here. And uh, some very kind soul was kind enough to give me the schematics for these switches, the switch harness uh, from a Facebook forum. And so I'm going to have to rewire this one here. So what I did is I have the driver's side for it. I crossed side or I went to the passenger side. It's in the exact same order but different color wire. So then I backed up and I went and I found found the ground wire and the power wire and or whichever way it goes around here, I have to look at that again. And what I did was I took a nail and I just flattened the end of it so it would squeeze in there, stuck it in there. I actually have both the power and the ground right here, but I found a spot up here where it's at where I can keep my charger uh, clamp separated. And what I did then was plug my charger in. Black with the white stripe is ground. Purple with red stripe is power. And I just clamp that on there. If I can get it to stay you now. Make sure it's not touching anything metal. Alright, I plugged my turn my charger to 12 volt 2 amp and just plugged it in didn't want to overpower it and check my switches recline down up both all everything seems to be working even the even the lumbar is working. So I'm super excited about that. Okay, I've got my passenger seat wired up. And that was as simple as connecting the negative to the, finding the negative wire and finding the power wire. Everything works great. On the driver's side, because of the memory module, we have to get rid of that. So what I did was I followed this wire here and it comes right in through here. Follows down around here, right before it got into the main wiring harness, I just cut it off. I cut it off, I opened it up, and it looks like it's as simple as connecting color to color from the motor. I actually I did the same thing here. This was connected here, here, and here. And so what I'll do is I'll open these up and butt connect everything there. So it um, don't even need any extra wire there. I did have to, for the lumbar support, I had to add an extra jumper wire. And it looks like everything will reach, everything else will reach from there. So I'll let you know how it goes. I'll be testing it here in a second once I get the this here connected to the lumbar and do the connect the power in the ground and just do a quick check, make sure everything's working. Okay, so I'm just starting to wire up my driver's seat. And I unplug this one from this one right back here. 
it looked like this one was going to the lumbar. So this is the lumbar motor. This is the only one I have to run a jumper wire for. So what I did was, and I want you to see this here, here's a gray and purple wire, and here's a gray and purple wire. Gray with a purple stripe or violet. Now this one's a little bit thicker gauge. I had it hooked to this one first, that one does not work. It is the one in the back corner and if you're looking at it, the numbers on the back it says pin 20. Pin 20 is the one you want to connect. That's the gray and violet wire that hooks to the back of the switch harness, which is right here. I've got everything connected. Just going to turn on my charger. And you can see here my lumbar support is working. Alright guys, I've been out of commission for two days. And here's what happened. I uh, was looking for the recline motors, the last two wires I had left to connect. And so this is the driver's side door right here. Anyway, I, I looked up online and found a picture of where the motor is. And it's back up behind this corner right here. And I saw these two wires right here and I said, hey, look at that. The wires run right to it, connected it, ran it to it, hooked up my power source, reached up here and hit this switch and boom, the side airbag blew out. Caught my hand, it's not awful. Um, for a second I thought I broke my finger, but it just swelled up really bad. Anyway, I scraped some skin off, so I just didn't want to gross you guys out. All right, so for wiring, <clears throat> I would suggest this right here, if you're doing this, disconnect this one right here. It doesn't do you any good in your truck if you're doing an older truck and you know using rewiring it to work in an older truck. Again, these are 2012 seats going into a 2000 truck. This is the airbag. Do but under no circumstances should you touch this wire other than to disconnect it. And I couldn't get it out, so I just cut it off. Well, it's too late now. So, anyway, on this one here, right here, I will give you the diagram for this harness right here and what each one of these wires does and where it goes. So, if you have memory, this is the memory wiring. White and red is power. Black with a light blue stripe is your ground. All right, this over here is your front height motor. This actually has four wires coming out of it. I looked on the passenger side and the two wires on the bottom are not on the motors on the passenger side. So those are the memory. Each one of these motors, there's four motors on this seat. Each one of them had four wires. Two of the, the two bottom wires closest to the motor or the smallest gauge are for the memory. Please, please, again, do not connect anything to this yellow wire, this yellow connector right here. That's, that's the airbag. If you put power to that, it will explode and blow out your seats. And now I have to get my seats restitched up. And that'll cost me right around 50 bucks. <clears throat> so let that be a lesson to you. Please do not do anything with the airbag. I didn't, I had a one track mind here and I was focused. <clears throat> Completely forgot about the airbag and, until it reminded me. So. I think that's it for the wiring. All this other wiring can really be cut out of here. I just left it in here for now in case I ever want to try to connect the fan for the cooling and the heat 
I may want to <clears throat> try to see if I can connect that at some point. Alright guys, that's the rest of this, or this part of it. I will make a written sheet that has all the colors going to which color, and you can take a screenshot of it to save it to your phone or save it to your computer. And next up will be putting the seat back back on. I'll get that back tomorrow. Um, getting everything tidied up. Take the old seat out, cut the harness off of it so that I can put this that harness on and just plug it in because that's simply just a ground wire and a, and a power wire. All right, so I've got my seat back. Put the seat back back on it. Huh. How many times can I say back there, huh? Um, it'll stretch out a little bit eventually. Anyway, uh, I'm getting ready to put it in the truck. And I'm guessing this is going to be a lot easier if you do the new carpet because it's got all the cutouts. In the old one, this was just a little tiny hole and everything sat on top. On this one here, everything's cut out so it actually sits down in. So you may want to get, get the carpet as well. Just finished up wiring, tidying up my seat. Um, cut the harness off the old seat. Tied that in here. Green wire to red white. It's power. Black and blue goes to black on here. I just snipped off the seat belt dinger buzzer thingamajiggy, whatever it is. Tidied it up, tied everything up nice and tight. Uh, getting ready to set it in my truck. Plug it in. Alright guys, so I just got everything installed. Got this seat adjusted where I want it. Only thing I don't have is the heat and AC hooked up. Um, I don't know if I can do that eventually later on, but maybe somebody else will have to make a video to do that. I think I figured out enough on this one for a while. Anyway, so this is what it looks like. I had original tan interior. I'm going to change out the door panels as well. That'll be another time. And it actually doesn't look too bad with the black carpet, black seats, tan trim, tan dash. Another thing I did to finish up the seat wiring harness is added this power block. Ran a power wire from a passenger seat up to here, added this power block because I was going to add a few other things and I didn't just want a bunch of random wires running up here with fuse connectors on them. Fastened it right there. Four bolts, put some silicone on there and some silicone on the top. If there does get any water in there to keep it from running down into the fuse block. But now I have power to my passenger seat and everything works as it should. I'll continue to tidy stuff up here and add this black stuff here. I need to get some some of that bigger cable cover to add all my other power wires and wires coming up through the firewall. Okay, so I'm working on my back seats and there's an extra mounting hole for hard to see here in the dark. Extra mounting hole for this seat for the 2012 rear seats. We have Underneath, there is already a threaded insert under the truck. It's just not cut through the top. So what I did, I have the same thing here in the front, and I got my seats covering it. So what I did, and I'll show you the other ones here in a second. Okay, I'm under the truck now. This is under the passenger side rear seat 
this is the back. This is the hole I was just showing you. It's not open on the top. So what you'll need to do is what, or what I did was I took a 3 8 inch drill bit and I cut it from the bottom so I could find this hole. There's actually two of them here. It's going to be the one most likely here, but measure the bottom of your seat. The other one is right up front here and there's no light because my seat is sitting on top of it. I cut that through. Okay, so what I did was after I found the holes on the bottom, I drilled it up through with a 3 8 bit from the bottom. That clears the inside of the threads. When I got back up to the top, I took a half inch drill bit and just reamed out the top enough that I could get my thread tap in there. And then I ran my M12 by 1.75 thread tap through there to clean out the paint. Now you may or may not have to do this. I'm trying to squeeze a subwoofer box in here and it's really tight and right on the edge of being able to fit. I had it in here but I have to put it in here first before I bolt the seats down because I can't get it in otherwise. So I cut this back out here, pulled this whole cover off, it's got these four tabs up here. It also has two tabs under here that I didn't realize and I just yanked on it and it broke off. I stuck them back in. So I've got my subwoofer box back in, dry fitting it. It's fitting back in my cutout. And I had, the only way that I could it before was up against this and it was sitting out here. So it looks like I gained half to three quarters of an inch, which may be enough. What I did before, because it was tight, I actually recessed my subwoofers back into the box, built another ring on the inside of the box, routed out the back of the box so it could slide back just a little bit. And they were rubbing up against the seat. And I had somebody tell me and said, e, they won't last very long if you do it that way because they rub against the seat and it'll wear a hole right so in So after I left out these two holes right here, what I did was I tried to run a bolt down through the top, but I could not get it pulled back far enough because of the tightness of my subwoofer box. So I just took an extra bolt that I had, went underneath the truck, threaded it up from the bottom, and now I have a nut that will go right on top of there and it hooks right into place. Tighten these down. Tighten the rest of them down and should be good to go. Okay, I have my seats mounted. I have my subwoofers in behind the seat. The seats do go forward and back. It's a little tight, but it fits pretty good when they're in the back position, which I don't know why I would have to have them up forward for long periods of time. I was going to put my amplifier in here. But I got a couple toolboxes on the back of my truck and I'm going to put all my tools in this tray. So I really need the space. Plus this gets completely, pretty much completely sealed when the seat folds down flat. So what I did was just put it under my seat here like this. And when I fold it down like this it slides all the way back. And I believe it'll get plenty of airflow back there, or at least more airflow than inside this box. And I can still put my seat up and down like that. And again, it won't be running very long with the seat in this position either. So now I have this whole thing for tools. Just wanted to give you the dimensions of the box, subwoofer box. It's about eight and a half here on the bottom. Five inches across there. And 14 and a half tall. So if your subwoofers don't stick out past that, that's the max that will fit behind these 2012 seats. 
in a 2000 cab.